Hello, everybody. Happy Thursday. We're back with our Thursday coffee chats. Although I don't think either of us have ever had a coffee, had we? <laughs> Catherine. Never had coffee. I've got my herbal tea. I've got two very tall dogs in the background and I have got got my herbal tea. But I think next time, next week, we're having that coffee. I need yeah. to make a point to like actually set, set yeah, a coffee. We'll actually have a coffee chat. Yeah. One day, one day, hopefully we can travel around to all the little independently owned coffee shops around the world and have friends come join us for an actual coffee chat. Um, but I'm so excited. As we're doing it, you guys know we're going back and forth on our channel. So this week is on my channel. And kind of last minute, we were going to talk about like expectation and reality, but kind of last minute, we decided to talk about about censorship and the power of censorship. And so before we get into it though, guys, I'm just gonna show you some interesting things that I sent it to Catherine this morning. I went ahead and I actually got this idea from Catherine when we did sovereignty, because I thought, let me just look up the definition of censorship. We know what censorship means in, in layman's terms. We know that it's just the censoring, the removing of information from public view. But I found it interesting because I sent this to Catherine, like it looks like they maybe have changed the, the, the definition. So one, the suppression or prohibition of any parts of books, films, news, etc., that are considered obscene, politically unacceptable, or a threat to security. So that makes censorship look pretty good, right? If like that's in favor of let's, let's block thing if it's a threat to security, right? But we also have the second definition, which in ancient Rome, the office or position of the censor. And so I noticed over here when I was looking up, oh, Wikipedia has a page. Well, when I do research, I don't trust Wikipedia for the most part, but I always start with Wikipedia because I want to see what the um what the world is saying what the narrative is saying and i found this interesting bit of information about socrates now plato who is one of my favorite philosophers i love plato's work was a student of socrates so look at this guys in 399 bc greek philosopher socrates while defying attempts by the athenian state to censor his philosophical teachings and he is considered the father of western philosophy was accused of collateral charges related to the corruption of an athenian youth and was sentenced to death by drinking a poison so he was forced into the s word we can't say the s word on youtube but removing himself um the details of socrates conviction are recorded by plato as follows and plato was socrates student in 399 bc socrates went on trial and was subsequently found guilty of both corrupting the minds of the youth of absence and the impiety and as a punishment was sentenced to death caused by uh, drinking a mixture that contained hemlock so now they say plato, plato advocate advocated censorship i don't believe that because i've read a lot of plato's works i've studied a lot of his works um anyway and opposed the existence of democracy so i just thought that was very interesting that this battle of information has been going on for such a long time and socrates again for those and i was telling Catherine this morning i get frustrated and this is where we kind of get into the derangement side of this, because I know for me studying the missing books of the Bible, I get a lot of truthers who are opposed to censorship that call me names that threaten me because I'm reading the censored books of the Bible. Well, if you don't, you either you either support censorship or you don't. And so if you don't support censorship, then you need to allow every piece of information to be available to the public, including the missing books of the Bible. But that also gets into like self-censorship, or we've been so conditioned to self-censor. And so, Catherine, I'm going to hand it over to you with this. Yeah, I mean, we've had so many chats off air about this because it's such an interesting area and it's so important. And obviously the censorship um in the world of um just watching my daughter rescue one cat from another the censorship in the world of the medical and the natural medicines etc has been rife for so long and even a lot of my friends who are scientists now will dispel the natural medicines and what don't want that information coming out because actually a part of the thing about censorship and when you start looking at self-censorship it can be often used as an excuse to not take accountability for your actions and to just keep in a victim mentality and we'll come on to more what we mean by that in a minute but none of us if you know my channel is about expanding consciousness to curiosity you cannot expand your consciousness if you don't listen to other points of view it's impossible so this is what's happening is even in the so-called awake community anyone that is expresses a different point of view 
is immediately censored by that community um, because they're being disrespectful or they're not a real patriot or not this. And, and, and the ability to freely express your opinions and talk through those and get feedbacks and feel into it it's just been mostly lost in virtually in both sides of the argument as well. And the other thing that I think about censorship that I'd like to get your opinion on, um, Bryce, and any of the listeners, is exaggeration to me is a really important form of censorship as well. So when someone takes something that has got a grain of truth, we all know that the dark side have to expose what they're doing. So what they often do is take something that's got a basis of a little bit of truth in it and then spin it or put a story around it. And then they feel that they've been, you know, told and given fair warning and therefore people are consenting to the actions. Well, in our everyday lives as individuals, if we take an experience and exaggerate that at all, you are changing the truth. And any time you're trying to manipulate another person's opinion by changing the tr truth and exaggeration is part of that, then that is equally, in my opinion, a very destructive form of censorship as well. And censorship to me means one, the ability to have free and open conversations and express your will and, and, and listen to other people's point of view without that being corrupted, suppressed, changed. You hit the nail on the head with Wikipedia. There's so many eminent people now that have had their Wikipedia pages completely hacked and changed. And we know so that's what unfortunately a lot of people believe. But also censorship, if you're using other forms of behavior like exaggeration, like me too, to manipulate other people's opinions, then that can be another form of censorship, which I see is very rife at the moment. Absolutely. And it leads into derangement. And that's what I'm. Um... You know, it's it's we were talking off off camera and I know so many people have said to me, like, why don't you just totally move to Rumble or well, because it's an echo chamber on Rumble. Yeah. We I don't want to be in an echo chamber. That's not and what I keep thinking too, Catherine, and I I as you guys know, I've been I, I've always been fascinated by cults anyway. Like cults really fascinate me. Um, just the psychology. And I do have next week I have a few uh I have a, a girl from Nexium coming on my channel as well as uh, one of Yogi Bajan's ex de, de factors and we see this a lot with cults too and that's why a lot of cult deprogramming you're learning how to critically think again because cults will also censor and so what they do like you look at things like scientology look at l ron hubbard his book dianetics which is all which is how it all started which is about the reactive mind well there's a lot of truth there that's yeah. what a lot of old i mean you don't need to read dianetics to understand the reactive mind you can go read the hindu text from thousands and thousands of years ago that the mind is what's controlling a lot of, of the suffering and the understanding of your life. Well, then what happens is they take that and they spin it and exaggerate and all of a sudden you have this very high controlled organization where you can't seek resources outside of the organization. But we do that to ourselves. And so what I, the thing that drives me, well, there's a lot of things about the, the truth or community that drives me crazy. And one of them is this idea of, yeah, you can't question. And so yeah. that, but that goes back to the critical thinking. What is critical? What is the word critical? It's cr to criticize. So critical thinking skills are to be able to take a theory or an idea that you actually believe in, but look at it in a critical way and see maybe where there's flaws in your thoughts and be open to that and be open. It's, it's Aristotle, another one, another philosophy and a philosopher. I love his quote. It's a sign of an intelligent mind when you can entertain an idea without accepting it. And yeah. we become so deranged that even with the issues that I deal with, with uh, truthers wanting to keep the, the banned books of the Bible banned or censored, it's like they think that just by reading these books, something is going to happen. Nothing's going to happen. You're just going to read the book. But it's that derangement of self-censoring to give reason as to why their, uh, their held beliefs are now being challenged. And that leads to cognitive dissonance. And that's scary, too, because we think about moving into a, and I think Catherine and I have said this many times, I know both of us do believe we are le moving into a more positive timeline, okay? But in saying that, we can't move into a positive timeline with blinders on, because we're just going to end up in the same shit we're in now. We're just going to replace one cabal with a new cabal, right? If we don't learn how to critically think, that's why we have a brain. I mean, Catherine, 
animals critically think, don't they? Yeah, they critically think and they think, I mean, there's a lot of debate about how animals um, use their mind, how they think about what's instinct and what is actual critical thinking. And certainly I can say that everything I learned at university in terms of that, I've been proved having surrounded myself with animals for many years now is wrong. And I think the problem is, is every time we talk about animal intelligence or thinking abilities, it's done from a human perspective and they're already making certain assumptions. And what we've seen throughout the course of scientific um, history is every assumption they've made about animals' thinking abilities has been gradually debunked. And this is the beauty, you know, about any science as well. The whole point about a science is you come up with a hypothesis and then a good science tries to prove the hypothesis right or wrong but you're not attached when you go into that about whether it comes out as right or wrong you're meant to look at it critically and certainly when i grew up that's what they used to do you know it was really fascinating because it was just as important that you know the results were just as important if you debunked the hypothesis as if you found it to be true of course now we know that the funding is the main source of what where you get your funding was will detect the results you get of most scientific experiments and I think why this is so important about the censorship now, we've all talked about how abhorrent it is the censorship that most people have had with regard to information about the interventions, about what's really happened with the big V word, about what our politicians are or aren't telling ourselves. But for me, Bryce, it comes back to very simple principles is, you know, first and foremost, you can't solve a problem from the reality that was created about that. So when you look at that, if we are censoring other people's opinions and not prepared to open our minds and really listen objectively we can be led down a very narrow lane uh, for example and so a lot of the things that we're finding out about now if we take about what they do to small children and things if other people then exaggerate other things and use those terms loosely it negates the experience and it means that the attention is not really where it's at so I know I'm having to talk about this in quite a roundabout way because of the platform we're on, but I'm seeing so much censorship. Because of censorship. Because of censorship. I mean, it's really we're having this conversation here. But what I'd like to really open your minds to is sort of saying, well, how much do people that are in the so-called truth of community censor each other? Because if you're if you've got a slightly more pessimistic point of view or you don't immediately agree that everything's in control and we'll just sit back and watch the movie you immediately criticize as being negative but actually look at what's going on are those people actually looking about what state we're in and what is actually happening and are we being unattached to the fact that is there someone coming to save you and i don't care whether you think it's trump a unicorn an alien an off-worlder you know, wh whoever your saviour is, a god, a spiritual teaching, as you know, they're they're all meant to be applied with critical thinking and with an open mind. And sometimes the way we learn the most is in those discussions with people that have got a different point of view to us. Yeah, and that's what you know. It's crazy because we we saw with Socrates, like he was forced to, he was given the death penalty basically because the government thought that his writings were too scandalous and so yeah. their writings were influence influencing the youth i mean that's an extreme extreme perspective to, to, uh, to have to live through like god bless them for living through that but we do the same thing we we we, ban we brand people i mean i know there are so many people in truth or community that have questioned mr t that have questioned they're not saying they don't think he's good but they say what if what if yeah. we're duped? And I've had those thoughts. I, I, in my heart of hearts, I believe Mr. T is fantastic, and I can't wait to hopefully say, tell him thank you to his face one day. But I have had those those shadows of doubt. Like, well, what if? What if yeah. this is just another side of the same coin? And that's not me being disloyal. That's not my, that's not me. That's me being practical and being prepared for anything. And I agree. And that's why we, that's why I'm doing the shadow work challenge with Catherine and a bunch of other channels is because we need to get back to us and stop self-censoring. I, it's, it's, um, I, it drives me crazy because I see so many people that are just sitting around. They, they put themselves in seclusion 
and they've gone into this place of derangement of thinking of thoughts because they're waiting for the white hats to come save them. <laughs> and if you wait, my, my mother used to tell us when we were little kids growing up, my parents used to say, my parents were always big Republicans. They, they wanted less taxes. They, and they would tell us growing up, my mother also is very much separate. She thinks church and state should absolutely be separate, um, which is not what most Republicans think, but she, she had some more liberal views, even though she was conservative. So I'm very grateful for that as a child. But my mother would say to us, to my sister and me growing up, if you allow the government to take care of you, you allow the government to control you. So yeah. let's think about this in savior perspective. If you allow someone to come in and save you, you're allowing them to then control you. Absolutely. So, well, why are you? It, it's waiting for the white hats to come around and rescue you is no different than the people on the other side that think that the beer virus is real and they're waiting for the zapper do to save them. It's no different. It's the same derangement. And so that's what I'm really, and I know we're, we're preaching to the choir with a lot of our viewers right now, but that's something that's really terrifying. I mean, we know, we know that 90% of the truthers are not, they're, they're paid by the three love, le, uh, letter agency to perhaps throw in derangement, to perhaps make you feel like if you don't have total faith in the plan, trust the plan, which is a, which cult experts will tell you they have these keywords and phrases they use. Yes to dismantle your critical thinking skills, to dismantle your gut intuition. So if they're saying, shame on you, you don't trust the plan because you have a question, then you start self-censoring. We're walking into a whole new set of controllers. And it's up it's to you, okay. it's up to each individual to not self-censor. And not, yeah, and be very cautious about the conversations you're having with others as well so if you're not prepared to really listen to another point of view you know you are censoring yourself and you're mate you're censoring your own ability which i'm seeing so much of it's really uncanny it, you know the the phrase evil genius springs yeah. to mind because you know you look at what's going on at the moment it's so frustrating to not be able to really say what you think because of the censorship yeah. but you know when you're when you look at what's going on and how cleverly they have manipulated you know you're either in this camp or that camp and there can be nothing else in between it's the age-old thing get them to look there not there where the real issue is and i think this is a massive danger of the censorship at the moment um i think it's really sad that we're in a society where it's considered brave to be able to express your opinions honestly and openly and some of the, a lot of the people that i respect the most are the ones that express their opinions but are not trying to convince others to agree with it but are very openly and unemotionally expressing what's going through their mind but they're equally willing to find new information that might change their mind and put them in a different direction and that is what's learning is all about you know the whole point about a young animal or a young child you know you learn to go to the toilet you learn to put on your own clothes you learn to walk you learn to ride a bike whatever it might be but the whole point is this is a series and you're not learning the same things at a three-year-old as you are at a 30-year-old. There's a reason why you learn things in stages and that should never stop as you go through life. And every single one of us can really make a change if we keep that critical thinking. And that means not censoring any information. <laughs> Yeah, being open. And that's what it's so funny as you're saying that I was thinking I and I I think it's been divinely inspired. I talk about cults at this time, too, because a lot of what we're talking about is very prevalent in cult mindset. And there's a I, I was talking to Kelly Teal on the phone, who's coming on my channel next week beforehand. And we were chit chatting about Nexium before she comes on. And she mentioned that on Amazon, there's a book called how, how to I think it's called like how to be cult leader or something. Like, and she said she read the first couple of pages on Amazon and she was like, well, holy shit, they've mapped it out on how these cult leaders yeah. do this. One of them is us versus them. Us versus them. That's very, very big in these high control organizations. So even though we are aware that we are in a very huge spiritual war, what I, what I see, perceive it to be is that it's really very gray. A lot of the people we think are bad aren't bad. A lot yeah. of 
very gray. And so we, we can't have that us versus them and not be open to hear other sides. Okay. So that's a big cult cult programming is to make you believe that it's us versus them. Right. We see that with the other side of the aisle of this war too, and us versus them with the zapper doodles, like us versus them, but we're doing it too on our side. We can't point, you point one finger at someone else. You got three pointing back at you. We're doing it too. We're doing the us versus them as well. We also see a phenomenon of doubling down. And so we see this in um, a, like, like the heaven's gate or they're like, uh, the, uh, what are they? The Advent. I can't remember the name of the church. It's big in the United States, but they thought that the end of the world was coming. It was some point in the 1800s and it never mm -hmm. came. And all these cult experts will tell you an incredible phenomenon will happen. Whereas a prophecy is not fulfilled by the cult leader. You would think that most people would turn around and leave at that point, but they double down. They double down into their cognitive dissidence. And I want to ask a lot of people watching, are you doubling down? Is there have been there promises that have been made to you by certain truthers that have not happened yet? And are you doubling down on that belief that it's going to happen when maybe that in itself is self-censorship to realize how you think something's going to happen is not actually the plan of what's going to happen to us all. And we are all co-creators of the new tomorrow. So by you doubling down, are you negating this incredible, our friend Emmy told me on the phone the other day, if you look at the etymology of responsibility, it's the, the it means the ability to respond. You yeah. have the ability to respond. So if you're doubling down into derangement, are you negating your God-given God -given ability, ability to respond? And if we have clearer critical thinking skills, if we really watch our own self-censorship, are we are we collectively going to be able to create a better tomorrow together because we're able to hear and process information that we might that might not feel comfortable to us? Yeah. And if I hear one more person saying it's all right, it's just because the timeline's changed. I mean, that's just a a catch-all phrase. Now, does that mean that I don't think timelines change? Yes, I do. But it can also be the perfect easy excuse for things. It's absolutely why it's, it's like the perfect down. excuse of, oh, you know, I'm fat because I'm going through the menopause. You know, well, there's plenty of people who go through the menopause that aren't fat. Excuse me. I know that's politically incorrect. But, you know, let's be clear about when we are really facing a real challenge and when we are really making it up just to suit our needs. And I think this is a time for blatant honesty. If we truly believe, if if anyone watching this is on the mindset that they believe that we create our own reality and our thoughts create things, then don't feel that you've got to slip into a victim mode or a me too mode to feel that you need to fit in with what could be very clearly seen as a, just a different type of cult behavior yeah. and don't be afraid to actually question things and and the word yes of course there's great ways to question things are you questioning it to put someone down and shut them down or are you questioning it from a place of a really open mind that is important because you will close people down if you're just trying to batter them into submission of your way of thinking. But, you know, opening up those critical thinking skills. If you look at any animal, we've taught loads and loads, and it will probably be what we might talk about next week, about being in the moment, tapping into your instinct, your gut feel, being in the present moment. An animal might have been down the same path a hundred times but they're still in tune with their instincts to see, is there a predator there today? Just because there wasn't one there yesterday doesn't mean there won't be one there today. And, you know, a, a lot of this, it doesn't mean that people are doing this necessarily maliciously because everyone's caught in these behavior traps. We've yeah. all been caught. We've, we, we've spoken till the cows come home about mind control. There's not a single person on this planet that isn't experiencing mind control. Yes, there's various different degrees of it, of course. Um, so it doesn't mean there's necessarily nefarious intent behind all of this. Sometimes there is, sometimes there isn't. But if anyone is stopping you asking questions that is a massive massive red flag and if anyone is shaming you from asking questions or or being able to put across a difficult point of view you know gone when i grew up that that everyone could very easily agree to disagree yeah <laughs> you know oh i know i've said this before i had two aunts two of my mom's sisters 
both Republicans, their husbands, Democrats. They had very fruitful, healthy marriages, children, and the marriage only ended when one of them passed away. So death did them part, and they were two politically different-minded people, and they would just tease each other. They would just tease each other. I remember when uh, the Monica Lewinsky thing happened here in America, my uh, Aunt Mary Jo, my mom's sister, who's no longer alive, she, uh, there, my cousin, Will, he came in, he was young and was at the back, they were in the bathroom getting ready in the morning. He had some questions about what was going on because he's a young kid. And my Aunt Mary Jo said, I just looked at Bill and I said, well, your dad voted for him. So I'll let him handle that, you know, and just walked away, you know, like you get to handle that since your dad voted for Mr. Clinton, he'll get to handle that, you know, and they just laughed at each other and walked away. It didn't, it didn't define their opinions, didn't define who they were as people. None of our thoughts and our opinions define who we are as, as at the core as people. And, and yeah, it's just, um, Man, it's 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 I just hope that as we keep going forward, more and more people will start to realize like, you know, this self-censorship is is a problem. And and I know in my studies, I would get frustrated because people would, you know, I'd be studying the cults and people would talk about the truth or community as being a cult, but they have some points that are very valid. Yes about Absolutely. our behavior in this community. And it's no different than the people who follow Dr. F. I can't say his name because hello censorship, but the people who follow him. We have the same behavior patterns on this side. They're no different. It's just the subject is different. You know, and I any good leader, any good leader, whether you're a military top professional, everything, every if you interview someone who's in one of the SEAL teams or something, and I've heard loads of them, you the the ability to react and make good decisions like that is absolutely crucial to survival and to saving whoever you set out to save. So if anyone's really genuine. They will never mind questioning from a, an intent of really wanting to know more and find out more. They will never mind it. And if anyone, anyone tells you that they've got all the answers or makes out that they've got all the answers, then, you know, the honesty of having the ability to say, I thought this then, I now know more, so I've changed my opinion. That, to me, is the people that I will respect and be more inclined to take seriously what they think. Because, of course, we will change our mind based on new information. And there's no one, there's not one single person you're telling me could have known exactly what was happening. Even if you've got a master plan that's being played out, no plan ever goes 100% things. It's always the reactions that you hadn't anticipated that you've got to deal with. So on both sides of the coins, the ability to be honest and say when new information has caused a course correct or, or change of opinion or decision or action is, to me, quite a good sign of whether someone's authentic in terms of their actions and what they're trying to pass on to you. I'll give you an example. So I had someone email me a couple, like like a month ago, um, who had stumbled across our 60 day shadow work challenge. And the person emailed me because he wanted to know before he signed up for the challenge, he wanted to know what my qualifications were to create a 60 day challenge. I had no problem that I'm, I'm, I actually thought the fact that he asked me that question was very mature. And so I sent him my my resume and my, cause he was a master Reiki practitioner. I sent him all of my education, my resume. And I said, I have no problem sharing this with you. This is my educational background as to why I, I, I can create this. This is, this is how I know how to do it. Um, mm -hmm. and that, and, but a lot of people would be like, how dare you question me? You know, like, no, we have a right to do that. We have a right to ask, um, in order to, um, to, and you're right, animals. I mean, I've lived here with my, my dog, Ravi has lived in two places. When he was first a puppy, he lived in a little place and we moved here. And so most of his life he's lived here in this, this is his home, but he's still alert. He yeah. hears every dog that walks by. He hears every car that walks by. He hears every person that walks by. He's very alert. So even though he's lived here for most of his life and this is his comfortable home, he's still aware. And so yeah. you know, we all need, and I, I would really encourage, if, if this is intriguing people, I would very much encourage, just start looking up cult behavior and see mm -hmm. where maybe you've fallen into, because all a cult is a, is a high controlled organization. None of us want to be highly controlled. None of us want that. So, so make sure you're not allowing yourself to be in that position to be highly controlled and that you, you maintain your, 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 um, your, your own, you know, 
your own path. Listen to everybody, but don't, don't, you know, I, I know, Catherine, we talk a lot. I get people, well, this person said this, and this person said this, and this person said that. Well, I don't care what anybody else is saying. This is my research. What's your research? Let me hear what yeah. your research is. Absolutely. And the other thing I want you to say is like, when you find that you have slipped into that behavior, there's no shame in it. We all do at different times. But the whole point, if we want to change the world, is we have to then take responsibly. And as we always say, when we know better, we do better. So this isn't uh, like, oh, my goodness, if you have been falling into that and blindly report to things. I mean, I've shared stuff. I've shared stuff on Telegram where I've sort of had a quick look at something, clicked a button, forward it on. And then when I've gone back and researched it in more detail, I've thought, oh, that wasn't accurate. You know, well, fine, we all do it. You know, we're not saying we're, we're aiming for perfection here. What we're just saying is when we recognize these behaviors in ourselves, we're far less manip manipulatable. Yeah. I'm not going to spell that. And equally, you know, you will start making changes in the world because, you know, there is far too much waiting for a saviour of an off-worlder or a politician or whoever it is. And, you know, I'm not a big one for the Bible, as you know. I, I really don't know a lot about it. But my understanding is the whole point is that the, the telling of when in all sorts of different religions, when some sort of antichrist is coming, they're going to be very elegant, very charming and very manipulative. So a lot of people will fall for it. And this is what I'm saying is you can have some very, very eloquent people um, some very charming people, but you still need to question everything, not from a nasty living your life in fear point of view, just from a sensible survival point of view, so that you're not being manipulated. Yeah, absolutely. You're absolutely correct. And all of the great religions of the world, you know, no religions are right, and no religions are wrong. But if you look, you can see very, very central ideas that play out through all of them. And most of them are about you're on and i want to say too with with that being said before we sign off don't a lot of times sometimes i think we we self-censor speaking of religion and each person is we don't feel worthy and so we have to insert ourselves into a sensational story yeah all the great religions all the great just the mere fact that you are here breathing air means you're worthy you don't have to have follow a sensational story you don't have to be part of the whistleblowers who were part of the controllers to matter. We all matter. We all matter in this world. And so, so, so find that sense of set, that sense of like, as Yeshua or Jesus said, heaven and hell is within you. It's always within you. Everything starts with you. And so don't, when you're in this path of like exaggerating or self-censoring, don't insert yourself into a story. That's not your story because you feel like it's going to give you credibility. You're already credible. You have a brain, you have a heart, you have a spark of God inside of you, you're breathing, you're already a worthy human being. And amazing. And and you're also a fantastic manifester because if you've managed to get to a certain stage in your life without attracting, I mean, we all learn in different ways. There's no shame if we, we learn it the hard way at all. You know, we're all, everyone learns in different ways. But if you've managed to reach adulthood without major dramas happening, high five to you, great job please you yeah. know share those skills <laughs> yeah it's uh, something yeah, to be absolutely. very very proud of absolutely well the one says that too i know Catherine and i are planning with the mystery guest that's going to come on soon to do a lot deep deep dive of the law of one um but the law of one actually laughs about that there are people in this world that are ready to ascend and instead of picking a really hard life, they actually picked a pretty easy life just to ride it out until they can ascend. And it's like, they're the smart ones. So if you're Absolutely. someone that's had a really relatively easy life and you're my, my stepdad's that way, that just kind of coasts through, but you're super aware and, you know, just kind of living that, living your life and be living your best life and nothing really crazy has happened, then you are probably one of the smarter ones, right? Yeah. Like, I, we're just going to coast this out because next time we're going to ascend. So, so don't feel like you have to have some telenovela in order to matter. You already matter. It's really, really important. Yeah. Let us know. Let us know what you think. Um, I really enjoy that. I think it's a really important thing that needs talking about. And um, I'm sure we'll continue this next week. Absolutely. Absolutely. And I want to actually say, too, if there's any of our listeners that is a defector from a cult, whether it was a big one or a small one, let us know because there's so much to learn from these defectors. Yeah. 
I mean, they, I, I have, I know I saw Kelly Teal who's coming on my channel. She said on another channel that she was very embarrassed to come forward because she fell for this. But I see her as like one of the most badass humans out there right now because she's saying, this is what happened to me. This is how they do it. And she's written a book and she's doing press junkets to try to help other people not fall for this. So if you are someone who is a defector or a defector from a cult and you are resonating with what we're saying, contact either Catherine or me and just let us know because your lessons are your lessons for the world as well. So I'd love to really talk. important ones, really, really important ones. Yeah, great point. All right, thank you. Guys. We'll talk we'll to you soon. about coffee next week. <laughs> yeah, hopefully. <laughs> Fingers crossed we remember the actual coffee next week. Yeah, exactly. Bye, guys. Yeah.